Oh, 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 this severe weather is about to go on a hot streak. I'm playing craps at the craps table because we have more storms on the way. And we've seen storms just like this all over the country, and that's only going to continue. Also, when's the heat going to go away? We're going to have all that and more on today's forecast starting now. Heather, bravo. What a gorgeous storm. Welcome back to another forecast, guys. Let's take a look at what things look like from space, and you can see a couple of features that I'm watching. One, we got a relatively stronger low pressure system for this time of year working its way through the Midwest. Check this out. We've got a trailing cold front as it's pulling cooler air along the backside. Along that front is where we're gonna have showers and storms today. Another feature you'll notice too, check this out down here in the Southeast, a little bit of a spinning like feature. We do have a high pressure. This is a dome of high pressure that is just sitting over top of the eastern United States. You can see all those storms, all those low pressure systems, these are all riding over top. And then underneath of that high, we have had day after day of showers and storms as that high pressure moves warm, moist air off the Gulf into the United States. And that combined with the ridiculously hot mega heat wave has been a recipe for some unsettled, daily storm action. And our Northeast brethren are finally getting a little bit of a cool down the next couple of days. Our West Coast brethren, once again, cloud free. Wow. Let's get down to brass tacks here. In the intro, I did tease a couple of days of severe weather that was gonna heat up big time. And not only was that a play on words of how hot it is right now, that was also showing you that our severe weather, especially in this region, the next couple of days is going to pick up Big time. And let's start with the risk for today, Thursday, June 26th. If we zoom in here to Iowa, we've got this slight risk that's centered in the center of Iowa, right in Des Moines, and then also goes up into Wisconsin. Now, normally a slight risk, we're not too concerned about it, but today we do have a localized tornado threat, especially in Wisconsin. We've got this 5%, it's rare that you see a slight risk with a 5% tornado risk, so that means tornadoes are the primary threat today. If we zoom in even further here, that includes places like Madison, in Wisconsin, La Crosse. I know I butchered that one. And then even into Southeast Minnesota and Rochester, and then going all the way just north of Des Moines. And if we look at the wind threat for today, we also have a decent threat of wind, but this is a slight risk driven by that tornado risk. And then we've also got another slight risk that goes all the way from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and just on the outskirts of Philadelphia, all the way through DC, down into Georgia here, where we could get some strong storms, once again, really guys, zooming out even further, anywhere in the Midwest and Southeast, you're likely to get some form of storm action today as that high pressure continues to sit over here, as that mega heat builds, and as that humidity just streams off the Gulf. Stop what you're doing right now. Pick up your mouse and your hand just like this, throw it in the air, grab it again, hit the subscribe button, and mash the like button, and leave a comment below. Look, someone's leaving a comment. This video is so cool. Wow. Back to you, Stormcat. Okay, so how are things going to time out today? Well, let's take a look at the beginning of the period. We are gonna have some showers moving through the Northeast. We also, off the East Coast of Florida, have a huge complex of storms and that will slowly drift to the West during the day. So heads up, West Coast of Florida, our Florida brethren. And then also, this is that low up here in the Dakotas. That's gonna slide its way out to the East. It's gonna bring a trailing cold front and watch. Once we get to about three, four, 5 p.m., boom! Look at that massive line of storms that extends from all the way up into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, all the way down back into Nebraska. That'll be the focal point today, and that's where we could get a couple of tornadoes. Now notice though, this is the line of storms, so I think these will be less discrete cells, more of like a big massive QLCS, or quasi-linear convective system. Just means a line. There could be a couple of tornadoes in that line. Heads up our Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin brethren. This thing doesn't really start to die out until after dark. And then we could even get some storms that form in Michigan overnight along a warm front. Now, if we go down into the Ohio Valley through the Southeast here, notice how we have generally unsettled weather from Ohio, even through Texas, Oklahoma City, down into the Florida panhandle, we are gonna have pop-up showers and storms 
all over here. Probably the only area that isn't going to get it is Arkansas and Missouri, but everyone else on the periphery of this high pressure is going to get some form of off and on shower and storm action. And also the monsoon season in New Mexico is starting to pick up in a big way as you've got warm, moist air flowing off the Gulf right into the desert. Now, I said our severe weather was going to go on a hot streak, and a hot streak has to be more than one, right? You're right. We have severe weather expected on Friday. So this is the second day in a row. This is Friday, June 27th, and it's centered in the Dakotas as another low pressure, relatively strong low pressure for this time of year is going to sweep its way from the West Coast into Canada. Behind it, it will be dragging a cold front and that'll be the focal point for showers and storms on Friday. And right now we only have a 2% risk of tornadoes centered up here in Bismarck and Perry, South Dakota, but I could see them upgrading this risk tomorrow or tonight, I would expect at least a 5% risk. Now, how is tomorrow all gonna time out for all of us across the country? A lot of folks tomorrow morning are gonna wake up, especially in the upper peninsula of Michigan, down through Michigan with the leftovers of that low that spawned the severe weather today on Thursday. Drop my pen, but that's gonna be sliding off to the east and with it, you're gonna have that trailing cold front like we just talked about. So as we go throughout the morning hours, we're first gonna talk about that because we are gonna get some some showers and storms that rejuvenate here in the northeast along that cold front and you'll notice we do have a couple of Boeing segments right in here so we could get some severe weather there tomorrow some stronger storms although right now the storm prediction center doesn't have a risk here I would expect them to expand this risk all the way into Pennsylvania and through upstate New York and then for the rest of the United States on Friday Guys, it's the same thing. We've got a high here. We've got winds rotating around it like this, pulling up warm, moist air from the Gulf. All of these storms, when you get highs in the 90s and you get humidity into the 70s, it's going to happen. You're going to have storms that bubble up and then bubble down. One to the next one, it bubbles up, bubbles down. That's just weather 101 because you need moisture and you need instability for storms. So when you get both, you're going to get them. All right, so we know Friday is going to be unsettled for the majority of the country. But what about the severe weather risk up in the Dakotas? How is that going to play out? Well, this is about 3 p.m. Central. And watch as we go throughout the afternoon and evening. We, we get about 8 p.m. Central, boom! That is when your storms form out of nowhere. And that is when we could get some isolated supercells. This will be when the tornado threat is the greatest from about 6 to 7 p.m. Central through sunset. Those things are producing some big boy hail. Notice how they kind of take a little bit of a rightward turn there. I'm telling you, do not sleep on the tornado threat in the Dakotas on Friday. And here is why. If you look at the upper level pattern, let's start on Thursday. Notice we've got this ridge of high pressure once again over the eastern United States that has just been sitting there. We do have a little bit of a trough that's going to be moving into the Dakotas on Friday. See that little bit of a disturbance here. There's not much, but it's just enough in the upper levels of the atmosphere, just enough spin to be able to give us an environment that is decently conducive for tornadoes. If you have your upper level winds this way and you have some lower level winds move this way, that might give us just enough spin in the atmosphere to create a couple of tornadoes. But this will likely be one of the last troughs at least for the next several days. So it looks like severe weather season after this weekend is going to calm down in a big way. Oh, doggy. We've got more severe weather expected this Saturday. TGIS, thank goodness I Saturday. As we've got the leftovers of this low that's going to be sliding, actually kind of down like this, with a little bit of a trailing cold front. That's what showers and storms were focused. Now, while I don't think a widespread tornado outbreak is gonna happen Saturday, I do think we're gonna see similar risks the past couple of days, probably a 5% risk centered somewhere in here. So heads up our Midwest brethren. Oh, I'm hot. When will it end? Guys, it has been stupid hot and ridiculously moist. When is that going to end? But guys, I got news for you, bad news. At least in the short term, the only people that are gonna receive relative relief are our North East brethren, check this out. New York City sitting at 67. We are, with that cold front that sweep through, we, those folks are going to see temperatures drop 
into the 60s, 70s, and close to 80. Meanwhile, the rest of us, we are still going to be in the 90s from kind of the central plains here all the way down through Florida. It does look like our North Dakota and Minnesota brethren are also going to get some relief as a couple of cold fronts sweep through that are dropping all that severe weather the next couple of days. But for the majority of the country, no relief is in sight. Check it out. This is Friday. Going into Saturday, things stay hot once again. All Anything in red here, guys, this is all temperatures close to 90 degrees. Now, this is Saturday as well. Heat continues. Check that out. Chicago, 96 degrees. Are you kidding me? And then going into Sunday, hot. Going into Monday, hot. Tuesday, hot. When will it end? And check out our moisture here. These are our moisture values for the next couple of days. These are our dew points, and we've got no relief in sight. Anything you see here in the kind of greenish purple, those are dew points of over 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is downright, you know what I'm gonna say. Say it with me, chat, moist. And that moisture is going to hold on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It's not until Wednesday of next week that we start to see some relief that the moisture starts to get pushed back down into the southeast. So buckle up for the long ride. Summer is here to stay. And guys, I've been keeping a close eye on the tropics. And right now, nothing is expected during the next seven days. I am keeping my eye on a little bit of a disturbance that's showing up in some of the models down here in the Bay of Campeche, but that's nothing you guys need to worry about at all just yet. As the National Hurricane Center is highlighting, no tropical activity in the next seven days the Pacific is a different story. We do have another cyclone that is going to form another tropical system that is going to form and push generally in this region. Now, how strong that gets, TBD, but heads up our Mexico brethren. I'll be watching this thing like a hawk. Gah! Not good, guys. Super cut, butchered. My haircut, they cut it way too short. Now I'm going to have to wear a hat for the rest of my life. Oh, no. You know what? That's okay. You just got to accept the balding, like I always say, never give up, never give in. My receding hairline cannot win. That rhyme. All right, guys, that's all I got for us today. Go watch Serena's new short. Do you know clouds weigh less than air? They definitely weigh less than me. Also, just a heads up, our podcast tonight, which we were supposed to have local band on, is postponed because he's chasing the severe weather. All right, that's all I got for us today. Find someone, tell them you love them, tell them you care about them today. It's the Stormcat 5, and I'll see you on the next one.